Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good weekend. And we've returned now officially to our, <laughs> our regular programming with Painting of the Week. And this past, let's see, I think it was Wednesday, is the, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. So what we're going to be doing this week is looking at two different paintings, both by Caravaggio, depicting the same subject, and that, not surprisingly, would be the Conversion of St. Paul. So, uh, as I've said, there's the, we have these two paintings, the, the Conversion of St. Paul, which was painted in 1600, and then a year later, Caravaggio painted a second version of as I, this, essentially the same subject um, with this somewhat lengthier title of the Conversion of St. Paul on the road to Damascus. And the second painting, which is uh, housed in the church of Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome, uh, is probably the more famous of the two paintings. The Conversion of St. Paul, the, the original, the 1600 painting, is also in Rome as well. So, as usual with art, to really be able to appreciate and understand these paintings, you have to be able to understand the story behind them and the historical context in which these were painted. So, the story of Saul, the conversion of Saul to eventually become St. Paul, uh, is recounted in the Acts of the Apostles. And, basically, Saul of Taurus was he was a very devout Jew and he was actually on his way to Damascus to bring the Christian community there back to Jerusalem as prisoners. Saul was very determined to annihilate this this new religion Christianity which he saw as a major threat to Judaism. So he's on his way to Damascus and then suddenly he's completely blinded by this intense light. He falls off his horse and then there's this big booming voice from the sky that asks him, you know, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And of course Saul is freaked out and he's on the ground, he can't see anything and he asks, you know, who is this? Who's calling me? And Jesus responds that, you know, it's him and he tells him to continue on to Damascus and there he's going to get more instructions. And Saul still can't see even after this, you know, kind of tumultuous event happens. So he actually has to be led by hand for three days into Damascus, and then Acts of the Apostles also tells us that he, he didn't eat or drink anything for those three days. So obviously by the time he actually gets into the city, he's very weak, and when he arrives, he's told to, to meet this scholar of the law, Ananias. And Ananias was somewhat reluctant, of course, to meet with Saul because Ananias is a Christian, and Saul, as I said, was you know known <laughs> throughout the Christian community as this persecutor of Christians. But Ananias um, is called upon by God and eventually meets with Saul and, and lays hands on him. And then at that point, Saul regains his sight miraculously, right? The Bible says that things like scales fell from his eyes, which always gives me kind of a creepy, gross image. But regardless of what that actually means, after that, Saul's able to see again. And of course, he's been, you know, changed by this experience. He's baptized and he goes into the synagogues and he begins proclaiming the name of Jesus. He changes his name from Saul to Paul and it's this great victory for Christianity. So now that you know the story of the conversion, which as I said, that the feast of that conversion was celebrated this past Wednesday, let's look at the first painting, the 1600 painting, um, Oil on Canvas. The most remarkable aspect of this painting um, in terms of what you know makes it different from the later version is we have this angel that's sustaining Jesus as he reaches downward towards Saul, almost like the angel has carried Jesus down from heaven and now supports him as he's appealing to, you know, Saul blinded on the ground. Notice that Saul has a um, armor bearer or companion of some sort who appears to be on the defensive. He's holding that big spear, but it's sort of unclear whether or not he can actually see Jesus. And more than anything else, we, we probably say he just looks pretty surprised by what's going on. This particular version of the conversion of St. Paul is the brighter of the two paintings, and it really owes more to the Mannerist tradition, um, Mannerism being this sort of movement that emerged toward the end of the Italian High Renaissance and eventually would act as sort of a bridge into the Baroque era that, that followed the Renaissance. In the second painting, we see the conversion primarily not actually through Saul, but through his horse. And this applies to the first painting too, although I think in maybe a little bit of a lesser extent. But but look at the horse. Look at the expression on the horse. Right? Saul's just kind of laying on the ground. It's the horse here that's freaking out. And also notice Saul looks quite a bit younger. He's got black hair and there's no beard. But in both paintings, 
and I want to emphasize this, Saul's been thrown off his horse, which symbolically, of course, is going to be very significant here because a man who's mounted on his horse is proud. He rises above everything else. But a man who has fallen off of his horse is, you know, pathetic. <laughs> He's humbled. And now Saul is underneath his own horse. He's even lower than an animal. So we have this great humbling experience in uh, the life of Saul, which symbolically, of course, represents at this point he's at his lowest. And instead of this armor bearer, we in this version of the painting, we have a, a groomer of some sort. And the sort of hilarious thing, of course, is that he's completely consumed with the horse's well-being. He's calming the horse, kind of leading him gently out of the painting while he's just leaving Saul there dazzled on the ground. All right, well, that will do it for this week. We haven't looked at a lot of Caravaggio, so I'm glad that we got the opportunity to look at these two masterpieces. So this is Painting of the Week. Thank you for watching, everybody. Be sure to tune in again next week for a brand new painting. But until then, take care.